OK, so now we start this with start without debugging. Uh, this will take quite some time because of the very large array size and the algorithm that I've used for uh, sparsely distributing the uh, numbers uh, within the uh, unsorted array. Uh, so expect this to take quite a little while just cause using uh, regular unoptimized sort. OK, so we have uh, the results. Uh, my ints unsorted has a sequence of numbers that uh, increase and sorted ints uh, shows that we have a number uh, sequence here that uh, starts at zero and increments steadily and our order check passed so we can see that sort worked and uh, the order check tells us that uh, all of the numbers are incremental sequential now so uh, now it's time to uh, use our first bit of uh, threading building blocks and what we're going to do here is not quite the parallel sort yet uh, I am going to uh, add some instrumentation just to uh, determine how long that took. Threading building blocks provides a nice simple uh, type and a namespace called tick count, uh, which uh, provides a nice simple uh, cross platform API. We're going to uh, use a start tick and end tick variable, and those are defined in TBB tick count.h. Now we just need to uh, take samples for those. Start tick is tbb tick count now. And we want to add another one for the end tick. And in reporting, we will uh, just quickly print here the results of uh, time taken and it's a float and you find that by taking end tick minus start tick and that produces an interval uh, with a member function seconds so now we can start that again without debugging so that we can monitor and see uh, what CPU core usage distribution is like as you can see, there's some work going on here, but some of that will be my recording this with uh, Camtasia. And that took 20 seconds. So now that we have a uh, solid working baseline, it's time to look at how to actually do this with threading building blocks. And in fact, it's incredibly simple. We simply replace sort with TBB parallel sort. And we're ready to go and rebuild that. Again, start with our debugging, bring up task manager. As you can see, it's taking still quite a long time and we're not seeing a great deal of parallelization apparently several cores unused the reason for this is that we built a debug build and both versions of sort do a, an awful lot of uh, sanity checking uh, which makes them run significantly slower and in fact when this finishes we should see that the parallel sort took significantly longer uh, this is in part because of the uh, time it takes the overhead of creating thread and distributing workloads. Uh, when we uh, do this with uh, unoptimized code, uh, the result is significantly slower. So uh, we need to switch to a release build to see uh, the actual benefits of switching to parallel sort. Now I'm quickly going to go ahead and uh, tweak some of the optimization settings for the uh, release build. Uh, I'm going to tell it it can do whole program optimization, even though uh, with just a single source file it doesn't make much sense. I'm going to tell it to use uh, full optimization, uh, allow it to uh, inline any functions that it wants. Uh, I'm going to tell it to use global optimizations, uh, tell it that it can use parallelization. Uh, I'm going to turn off uh, buffer security checks. And because I'm using the Intel compiler, 
I'm going to add slash q opt subscript in range, which tells it not to worry about uh, the for loops and so on uh, going out of range. And I'm going to uh, switch back quickly to our benchmark using uh, plain old uh, serial sort. Save that. Debug. I had to build that. And as you can see, that was significantly improved, uh, taking only uh, 0.1 seconds. However, again, didn't do anything to uh, the secondary CPU cores, so not a lot of parallelization there. So let's try that again with parallel sort. As you can see, it took uh, half the time. Uh, again, a lot of that uh, was uh, probably just the uh, time it took tearing up the actual uh, sort call. So we're going to take this a step further and use a loop to uh, increase the number of iterations. And we're going to do 100 iterations. Also, I'm going to move the uh, assignment of the copying of uh, the unsorted ints into the loop. Uh, otherwise, we'll be wasting a time. So let's uh, try that. Again, you can see there's uh, not much parallelization. And it took 10 seconds, as we might have expected. But now we'll try again with uh, parallel sort. And as you can see, we actually managed to uh, get a decent amount of processor distribution there, uh, and it only took three seconds. So as you can see, uh, the single use of parallel sort, especially in debug mode, uh, wasn't particularly beneficial. Uh, but uh, once you start using parallel sort regularly uh, multiple times throughout the code, that's where you really start to see the advantages. Uh, I hope this uh, introduction has been useful, and I hope you find the uh, little uh, template skeleton here uh, useful. The uh, source code is on my website. Uh, I'll provide a link in the credits at the end. Thank you.